If you've seen my video I did comparing the roof box to the roof basket, you'll know that I'm a massive fan of this roof basket idea. But I was interested with an electric car, what the impact of that less aerodynamic shape when you're carrying cargo, i.e. the big bags piled up high on the top of the basket. What kind of impact could I expect in an electric car with that kind of load on the top? So we recently did a sort of test run of this camping format with the roof box and, and fully loaded, went up to my parents' house, which is a 110 mile journey. So I did some interesting observations along the way on the range in the car and to see exactly what kind of impact we could expect from that load. So this was with uh, two big bags sort of piled up on, on the top of the basket, end on, so you've got two kind of big circles on top of the car, vertical things. So they, they, you know, at a first glance, they definitely don't look very aerodynamic. So the way I kind of measure this impact on range is by watching this graph that you get in the Tesla. Uh, and it, if you put your destination in and you're following a route, and this graph gives you a, an estimate of the battery loss over the journey, and it's actually unbelievably accurate. It's usually within one or 2% uh, at the end. And in this, and I've done this journey in particular a number of times, and it's very rarely out by more than 1% uh, when I get there. So I knew that was a reasonable way of actually comparing the impact with previous journeys that I've done when I haven't had a load on the roof. And I know that it's accurate to that graph. If I do the, the same run, compare the, the results. So basically, when I set off, it will tell me what the battery, what it thinks the battery is going to be. And when I get there, obviously, if that number is then lower, I know that's basically as a result of the thing on the roof. But something interesting happens because that graph reacts in real time, you can see the impact according to the section of road you're on. And what was really interesting on this journey was over that first 30 miles of that journey, we were under 60 miles an hour, sort of between 50 and 60 miles an hour. Within that 30 miles, the estimated end range didn't change at all it was the same exact percentage. So basically under 60 miles an hour, you can have this thing on the roof and there's no change. There's just nothing, there's no noticeable perceivable difference in the estimated range. Uh, obviously I'm sure the consumption is slightly higher, but it's minimal. It didn't even show up on this graph. That's the key. What was interesting though, is when we hit 70 miles an hour and we are cruising at a steady 70 on the motorway, I could see the final percentage on this graph dropping and it was dropping really fast. I was thinking, uh oh, yeah, what? Are, <laughs> this is serious. If it carries on dropping at this rate, we're gonna plow through a huge amount of range. I was a little bit concerned. But the thing is, it stopped after about 10 miles. So I think it was recalibrating to the new load. It was thinking, okay, so it knows I've got this great long journey, about 50 miles at motorway speeds uh, with the resistance that the car is experiencing. It's at taking all that future journey into account and saying, I'm gonna arrive with that lower percentage. Because after those first 10 miles, we were, we were still cruised at 70. And that percentage that it arrived at after those first 10 miles at motorway speeds was actually extremely close at the other end. I think it was within one or 2% in fact, of that initial estimate after the 10 miles. So it's super interesting that the car can calibrate in this situation. But of course, the other interesting thing is that there's only that real impact at 70 miles an hour. So the return journey is kind of similar. There's, there's a good chunk of roads, sort of 60 miles an hour, 50, 60 miles an hour roads before the motorway again. Uh, and I thought this time around, I'd do an experiment and stick at 60 miles an hour on the motorway and see if that adjusts that arrival state of charge percentage at all. And so knowing that it's trying to recalibrate, I was sort of expecting to be able to do this test within sort of 10 mile chunks of testing out different speeds on the motorway there to see if there was an impact. Obviously, the more I go down the motorway, the less impact I'd expect to see because there's less miles at that speed remaining for the graph to consider. So on the way back, it's actually a similar pattern. You've got a good chunk of road that's sort of 50, 60 miles an hour before you get to the motorway. And sure enough, that estimated state of charge on arrival number didn't change until we got onto the motorway. Uh, and, and then what I thought I'd do is an experiment and just continue at a steady 60 miles an hour on the motorway and just watch to see if it did change that. Uh, interestingly, after about 12 miles or so at 60 on the motorway, uh, it actually went up by 1%. So at 60 miles an hour, you're actually still beating the estimated consumption uh, on the motorway even with this load on the roof. So I thought what I'd do is go up to 65 miles an hour and cruise for another 10 or 15 miles at that speed and see what happens there. And that actually then dropped by two percentage, just so this is this final uh, state of charge. Obviously we're, we're losing charge, you know, the normal kind of rate as you're driving along. I'm only interested in that final arrival state of charge uh, prediction number uh, for this test. So it dropped by two percent. I thought, okay, well, uh, yeah, that's, that's reasonable. I would assume based on the way it behaved before, that number would then stay like that for the rest of the journey if I carried on at that speed. So I was happy with that little part of the test. So after that, I thought I'd go up to 70 miles an hour and see if we could reproduce that kind of initial uh, prediction drop that we experienced on the way up. And it did, it dropped, uh, I think it was dropped by about 4% in total then at that point. Obviously we're using up those motorway miles with the initial experiments. And it arrived within 1% of that figure at the other end of the journey. And I think it was, so it was a total of 5 
5% uh, off where it had started. So we lost a total of 7% off that uh, estimated arrival state of charge on the way up. Uh, so just cruising at 70 for the section that we could do as about 50 miles. Uh, but that it, that percentage drop was all calculated in the first 10 miles of the motorway section. So really interesting. So what we want to do is take that 7% and apply it to the total drop in percentage that we were expected to use for that journey. And then we can see what kind of a percentage increase in consumption uh, the result of the roof basket on top created for us. So doing the numbers, it actually works out as a, at about 17% more energy used for that particular journey. Obviously, that's looking, you know, we know that it only applied on the motorway, which was about half of that journey. So you could think if, you, if your journey was all motorways, the impact would actually be even higher. But the interesting thing is motorways are really the only place you can do these kinds of speeds where that impact is happening and in England we've got so many superchargers on our motorway network it's super easy just to hop between superchargers so you could easily do that just you know pay the little bit extra for the extra energy that you're using uh, but it wouldn't really be an issue but of course you could also cruise at 65 or 60 and avoid the issue altogether you know that choice is yours to make uh, it's quite a manageable issue to have you know and when you're in more rural roads there's no impact at all so it doesn't matter. So what's really interesting about all this is just how useful this graph in the Tesla is. You know, it's fantastic to have this amazing predictive ability to see what your arrival state of charge is going to be and have it react so quickly to the additional load of the motorway and it recalibrated within 10 miles at the motorway speed to show us that more accurate arrival um, figure. And of course, you know, it routes you past superchargers if you need to to get to your destination so you could basically just forget about this and put the sat nav on and, and let it route you to superchargers as needed there's no second guessing you can just look at that graph let the sat nav do its work it will take you to a supercharger if you need to uh, so that's very very cool that the tesla can do this so if you enjoyed this kind of geeky look at aerodynamics and range and stuff, it's, it's interesting to actually take these things and dig in a little bit to really make the most of what is essentially a normal day-to-day -day activity. And that's really what this channel is all about. So if you look around the channel, you'll see other videos that I've done where I've done the same kind of thing uh, in different areas. And one of those is keyboards, uh, which obviously most of us kind of use a keyboard on a computer at some point. I think that's a really good area to optimize. If you go down a similar path to me, you'll end up building your own keyboard, designing it for your specific hands and creating your own layout. And these things are amazing. They're just Bluetooth keyboards and they work with any device as a normal Bluetooth keyboard. A really interesting rabbit hole to go down. And if you do go down that road and you want to build one, you can use PCB Way to order the PCB boards for that keyboard. I'm really happy to recommend the service they provide. They're really fast, super affordable too. And PCB Way offer this service of creating these boards from either the designs I've created or the ones that you can get stuck in and do if you follow along with my videos. So many thanks to PCB Way for sponsoring this video. I'm definitely happy to recommend the service they provide. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share. Uh, that'll help others find the video and I'll see you in the next one.